Hey you guys, it's Maxine. Thank you so much for watching. So in today's video, I'm going to be balayaging my client's hair and our goal is to basically get this color as light as possible. And as you can see, her root color is a little bit different of a color from the ends and the rest of it. Her natural is coming in a bit and she does have naturally dark hair. Um, but throughout the rest of the hair, she has some previous color going on. So I do have to highlight her hair in like a specific way so that it doesn't lift patchy or anything like that. So I'll definitely show you guys how I do that. Because we definitely want this to lift as light as possible. At the time, her goal was to get as light as possible. And anytime we're lifting out dark hair, we definitely don't want it to be patchy. We want it to be as nice and lifting up even as possible. So yeah. I'm going to be adding in a bunch of balayage highlights and then I'm going to be doing a color melt. So definitely stay tuned for my formulas because I always will let you know what formulas I'm using. And the color melt is where I'm doing like a darker formula at the root and then melting it down into the ends. Another thing that I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be blending out this chunk of blonde that she has in the front. We definitely wanted the chunk and the face frame in the front to be more natural, more seamless, a little bit better of a face frame and so that it's not just like one chunk. But yeah, so I'm basically going to be blending out this chunk and adding a lot more of highlights behind it so that it definitely gives her like a nice face frame. And we're going to be toning out a lot of this red. There's like little hints of red tones. You can see it on the ends. We definitely don't want any red or anything. So I'm going to be using like ash to kind of get rid of that. But yeah, anyway, you'll see that when I do the color melt. But I just kind of like to show you guys like what I'm working with beforehand and give you a little bit of an explanation of what we're starting with and what the goal is for the future, for, you know, the future of the service, just so that you have an idea of what we're doing <laughs> anyway. Definitely don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a big thumbs up. Also, definitely follow me on Instagram. It's at Maxine Glynn, and I'm always putting my formulas on the posts so that you guys can like refer to it as a tool to give you an idea of what formulas I used for the color I'm doing. I just love... I love seeing that like sometimes if I see a picture that I love and I'm like oh what did they use I hate that they don't put it so I always try to put my formulas for you guys but anyway if you guys want to see me take this client from dark brown to as blonde as possible and then the color melt then definitely keep watching <laughs> So I'm just starting off with parting my client's hair down the middle. I think she wears it in the middle a lot or even if she goes both ways with it this way, it'll be good either way she wears it no matter what. And I'm just sectioning off behind the ear and sectioning it forward and I'm starting the very first foil at the nape of the neck in the back. I'm starting the first foil at the nape of the neck because this is going to be the very first piece that actually finishes processing, obviously, because it's the first piece that I'm starting working on. So by the time it's ready to get rinsed down, I can just lay my client comfortably back into the sink and rinse off these first pieces so that she's not kind of all wonky in the sink and stuff like that. So it's just kind of helpful for when it's time to rinse. But I'm basically just taking a thin slice and I teased it up a bit and I'm using this clip to kind of keep the tease out of my way. And I'm just balayaging the very top and bottom of my piece, making sure that everything's super, super blended. I don't want any like weird like lightener chunks or anything because I want this to lift. I want to like assist it lifting even. I don't want to add any type of blotchy pieces because obviously it's so dark and there's a lot of color build up and so there's that possibility that it's going to lift blotchy so I definitely want to avoid that and want to not assist in that you know so I'm taking really really thin slices and that's going to help it not lift blotchy and uh, you can see I'm just gently teasing up some of the root it'll just help in the color melting process so it'll just diffuse that like line in the root and then I'm just taking this like duckbill clip it I like that it's like flat and it just kind of pushes the tease up out of the way and when I do my balayage pieces, uh, I'll just take a slice like you can see here. No nothing too thick. Like I like to keep it kind of thin. The thinner it is, the better control you have of the lift. And then I put the lightener all throughout the ends about halfway down the strand. I like to saturate it really, really good on the ends just so that that part's at least done, you know. And now I'm just doing like that V formation and I'm just making my shape 
but I'm also bringing it up a little bit in the middle. You can kind of see that I'm just making sure that it's blended in the middle also, but mostly the V shape. And then once I'm done blending it up, you can kind of see that I'm taking the brush and I'm just back combing up with the brush to kind of help that line get diffused and blend, you know? And once I'm done with doing the top, I'll flip the piece upside down like this, like I'll flip it up and then blend out the underneath also. That is so important to blend the underneath. I know sometimes people skip this step, but I just feel like it's not even negotiable. Like you have to do this part because this is what's gonna prevent it from getting blotchy. And then because I had flipped the piece up, some of the little strands move a little bit, you know? So when I'm done doing the underneath, I always just quickly do the top again really fast. And then I sandwich the piece in between two foils and I wipe off my gloves in between sandwiching the bottom and the top just so that the foils stay nice and neat. And I'm skipping about a nice half inch section in between each balayage piece. I definitely want to leave hair in between each highlight to keep the dimension, but I don't want to leave too much hair. So about a half inch of a section in between. And then I'm balayaging like the right now I'm working on the right side of the back and I'm also doing another piece on the left side of the back. I don't always show it on camera because it's kind of hard to see that angle anyway, but just know that the nape part, which was the very first foil I did, was just one foil because that like section is smaller. And then as I get higher up, as I go higher up in the back of the head, the, the section widens. So then I do two slices next to each other. So just so you know, right now I'm doing the right slice and then right next to it to the left, next to the left ear, you know that's when I'm doing the left section so but yeah each piece just gets done the same way basically I'm blending out the very top of the slice and the bottom of the slice and both both of them have that V formation And this is the part where I put that foil underneath and then I stick the ends to like the bottom of the foil. And I don't, I don't show it here, but I wipe off my hands before I sandwich the very top foil because I don't want the foils getting messy. I don't always show it because I just feel like it's wasted time in the video. But I like to point out that that's where I, where I wipe off my hands just so that my foils stay nice and clean. And you also definitely don't want the outside of the foils getting any lightener on it. You want to keep it as clean as possible because if any lightener touches any of this like left out hair in between the foils, you're going to screw yourself because you're going to be left with like blotchy pieces in between. And as subtle as it you might think it is, it's, it's not like you don't want to leave spots in somebody's hair because like the foils are bleeding lightener out of them, you know, just keep everything as neat as possible. So I always keep like a dry towel, a couple of dry towels at my station. And even if you want to leave like a wet towel that's fine too but definitely wipe off your hands with a towel in between And now I'm at the very top part at the crown and I'm just taking the one section because it's a small enough section. It's not as wide as like the middle parts. So I'm just taking one piece just like the nape and you can see it better on this slice. So you can see that the very ends have a little bit of color buildup on them and then the top part has a little bit of color buildup also. All the way at the roots where the clip is is her natural and then this middle part here in the middle of this slice has a light section. So she just has a little bit of banding going on but it's really subtle like obviously like only like a hairstylist would really notice it and like me I'm pulling up this slice you know so it's like we're really looking at it but it is subtle but sometimes it does play into part of why it's hard to lift it like evenly so it's even better that I'll show you guys how I like go back in after and make sure that the you know hair is lifting nice and everything but yeah so I just want kind of wanted to point that out because that's one of the reasons why I go back in at some point and you know paint on the lightener again because that's like my little trick or whatever like of how I lifted it even but 
it's necessary to do that when you have some kind of a color buildup on the hair. So I was hard to see it in the other strands, but because you could see it in this strand, I just wanted to point that out quick. And yeah, so I'm just going to be finishing up this back section and moving on to the side section. And I don't show the left side, I show the right side, but um, I, I do each side the exact same. So the side that I'm showing just do the same exact thing on the other side and it'll all come out even and after I finish applying everything I'll show you guys how I go back in and definitely make sure that there's no weird like banding with the lifting and stuff and I just turned it for a second so that you can see exactly what shape with the lightener I do I, sh I obviously say that I do the V shape but looking at it from like a side angle is a little bit hard so if you guys want to like go back to that part and pause it you get to really really see like the shape of how I put the lightener on it and now I'm on the right side of the head like I said I already did the left side and this is the very front piece I take a slice over near the ear and a little piece at like that sideburn area and I'm doing like the whole front face frame section now the face frame is really important because this is like where they if they tie up their hair or even tucking behind their ear like this is like a really natural part where the sun is normally supposed to lighten like the hairline part so that's where this face frame comes into play um, and I'm obviously still doing like this V formation but in the very very front section I you definitely at, at least in the hairline that's like I always like to do the face frame make it a little bit bolder because the color melt will diffuse some of the boldness so make it a little bit bolder like stripey in the front a little bit that way she definitely has like a nice face frame and like I said like don't worry about making it stripey because if you do a toner or a color melt that's just gonna like like erase that you know like bold feel a little bit but but yeah, when it comes to the face frame in the very, very front, I like to go on the top, the bottom, and even like at the very right side, like I like to put the lightener all around the three sides, like really get it covered in the front there. Like a lot of saturation is a lot of the times is key because if you saturate the very front really well, it's going to lift the best and that's what's going to give you like a really good face frame. And just like the back, I'm skipping like a half inch section. And a lot of times when I'm on the side in the front like this, I go on like a little bit of an angle. It's not necessary to do that. You don't have to because like I said, the color melt is going to diffuse and you're going to give it the shape of the balayage with the color melt. But sometimes it is nice to go in on like a little bit of a slant. I didn't do it at this part right here, but sometimes I do go in on a slant a little bit. But I'm basically just doing the same thing. I'm taking that little bit of a sideburn area. And when I apply the lightener on like that very front piece, like I said, you go on the very top, underneath, and towards like the front of the face. It's kind of like that triple motion. And I just feel like that's the best when it comes to the face frame. And I just realized this far into the video that I didn't tell you what I'm lightening it with. But I'll definitely be sure to write it down at the very beginning just so you guys can see it on the screen. But yeah, because that's like annoying like this whole time you want to know what the hell I'm lightening it with. But anyway, <laughs> at least I'm saying it now and I'll write it at the front at the beginning like I said. But I mixed up v I mixed up Matrix Light Master with 30 volume. And I did that because I obviously need something way stronger than 20. Like 20 is just not going to cut it. And 40 volume, I didn't want to just go right in with 40 volume because I don't really know the history of her hair. I wasn't the one that did it previously, like a bunch of previous times. I didn't know how much in the past she lightened it, darkened it, lightened it, darkened it. Like I'm not exactly sure what her history was. So just to be safe, I used 30 volume. And, you know, throughout the process, if you feel like the hair is strong enough and it can be lip it could be like budged a little bit more then you can go back in and like quickly you know uh paint over 40 volume and lightener and give it a little bit of like a budge you know but i i thought 30 volume was fine and it really lifted fine and like i said i'll show you guys how i go back in with this and i don't go back in with 40 volume i'll just go back in with the 30 volume that i originally mixed and you know just kind of resaturate some of the pieces because a lot of a lot of these pieces you know got kind of like blotchy looking as it was lifting and so going back in and resaturating it with the 30 volume was fine for me like I said I, I didn't really think it needed the 40 but I also take really small sections and stuff like that but yeah so I did light master matrix 30 volume on the whole thing
And also this client in the very front pieces had a couple of shorter like pieces like kind of like baby hairs so I definitely wanted to incorporate that of course into the face frame um, and a little bit of a trick if you know it's definitely gonna fall out of your section that you're working on instead of having them instead of making the mistake of putting lightener on it included in that slice that I just worked on and then it falling out of the slice and like flopping on their face or something like that it's definitely better just to kind of paint it on after so if they have like a little bit of a shorter chunk that's kind of like a safe thing to do if they have a shorter chunk then just kind of keep it out of the picture for a second work on that slice and then at the end include it into the slice you know that way you don't have to worry about it falling forward or anything like that I mean because you're working with lightener and it's it's definitely you don't want to you know run that risk of lightener going on the person's eye or anything like that you know and because it was falling out of the section a little bit because obviously it's a pretty wide big section you can see I sandwiched like a little horizontal foil there just to make sure that nothing was sticking out of the foils I definitely don't want anything any lightener sticking out of the foil because I don't want to cause any bleeding yeah, so that's just something I do to make sure that everything stays nice and safe. Like if they have a chunk, just, you know, apply it into the slice afterwards. Then you don't have to worry about any of that. And yeah, I'm basically just going to keep doing the same exact V-shape pattern. Like I said, with that chunk piece, I might do that on a couple more slices. I'm just going to do the same thing, working up the very top of the head, and we're going to get into blending that chunk out in a second.
And now I'm blending that chunk out and basically this section I'm just doing the exact same thing that I've been doing on all the other sections. And just basically doing that same pattern is just going to blend this chunk out so nice. And the front of it, where that chunk is already like lighter, it's just going to get even lighter, which is just going to add to the face frame being lighter in the front. So it's just going to be really nice. And her hair was pretty healthy, so I didn't have to worry about because it was lighter, or, oh, we might have breakage or something like that. I didn't have to really worry about that because her hair was so light. I'm sorry, it was so healthy, so that's good, thankfully. <laughs> and yeah. But I, you know, I always check on the foils anyway, even if I do feel like their hair is healthy. And yeah, now I'm just adding in that very front chunk. And um, like I said, like adding in that slice behind it, lightening up that hair behind this chunk, it's just going to very naturally blend out this chunk so that this face frame is going to be a lot more seamless and more natural.
So I'm going right in and I'm looking at how the back is lightening and as you can see it's lightening pretty nice but at the same time it's super super warm still and because the lightener like you'll see it now when I open the foil the lightener it seems like it dried out quite a bit right I saturated this like section all these sections I saturated it so well but what happens a lot of times when you're working on a client with color buildup the hair will quite literally absorb the lightener and because the it's working so hard to eat through all of this artificial color so when I opened up the foil even though it's looking like it's lifting pretty good it's kind of just stuck at this warm color and I don't want it to be stuck like I want <laughs> this hair as light as possible and the only reason why I'm pushing it past this warm color is because her hair is so healthy if it wasn't healthy you know you can't really push it because you don't want to cause damage you definitely don't want to cause damage to the point where the hair is feeling like gummy or anything like that. That is not good. <laughs> but yeah, her hair did not feel like that at all. So I knew it was definitely strong enough to go back in. Like I said, this is the Light Master 30 volume. And I'm going back in and I'm just kind of painting it on this hair that lightened up. You can see how dry this hair is like right now. So it's like not pushing past this warm color. And it's also just a little bit blotchy. Like in some spots where it dried up, you know, so I'm just resaturating this completely and I'm feathering it up towards the top, feathering it up towards like on top of this previous V section that I painted. So on like the left and the right side of this slice and just really saturating the ends really well. And then you saw it in the last thing, but I'm going to show it to you and I'll explain it. I'm basically after I saturate this like so much better, I'm going to sandwich the top foil over and then I flip the slice upside down and I paint the underneath part. So like I know it's hard to explain, but I'll show you guys. Just wait for it. <laughs> but yeah, basically like, oh, I'm not even there yet. Hold on. <laughs> wait for me to sandwich it. I promise. <laughs> it'll just be, be, I feel like it'll be easier for me to explain it as you're watching it happen. So hang on. Okay, you're, we're at the part that I'm talking about. <laughs> so I flip the piece upside down and then I'm peeling off that very underneath foil and I'm basically just doing the exact same thing. I'm just resaturating the underneath and I'm blending this forward and down towards the root. And this is really, really helpful to prevent any blotchiness or any warmth even stuck underneath that slice, you know? Sometimes you feel like you're super, super, like, saturated and you're doing the best job and, like, the slice is super, super thin. But you really just don't know until you flip that foil upside down. <laughs> so that's just, like, a little bit of a trick that I do. But I'm, like, a perfectionist, so I will take the extra step because I really do feel like it's worth it in the end. And, you know, going back in and doing these extra things is just so good for the end result, you know? And I'm just going back in and resaturating the exact same way on all the rest of the pieces, flipping it upside down, making sure that everything underneath is blended out and resaturated so that it's not blotchy or anything.
And now that I went back in and resaturated all of these foils, I'm gonna let this sit and process for like 15 minutes. And then I'm gonna be rinsing out the very back section because that's gonna be done really soon. And I wanted to show you guys what this looks like after it's completely done processing and I don't want to push it anymore because as you can see the very ends lifted to a really nice yellow and the mid shaft is a little bit warm still but that's completely fine because the color melt that we do the root formula is going to be darker anyway so that's going to cut out a lot of that warmth that's left over but look at the ends they lifted to like a nice light golden so that's literally perfect and I just wanted to show you what it looks like with the lightener on before I actually rinse it. And while the rest of her hair is still processing, I'm working on the color melt now. And the formula that I'm using is Matrix Color Sync 6G and 8V for the root color. And this is mixed with equal parts 10 volume. So basically I'm trying to make a level 6 at the root with her color and doing a level 6 and a level 8 together makes a 7 and I always like to formula up a level in matrix color sync just so that I have more control of like the level it ends up depositing to and I don't accidentally go too dark or anything. So putting a level 7 on the root will make it come out more like a 6. And I'm using gold in it because we still want this to come out like a honey natural type of a color, like a sun-kissed color. And then the 8 violet is going to be canceling out the yellow. So it's just going to be like muting this color a little bit to give it more of like an ashier feel, but not over ashing it out, if that makes sense. So that's the root formula. And the formula that I'm going to be doing on the ends is 10G, 10V, and clear. And so it's the same exact concept um, of the color on the ends. Like we still want it to be like a nice sun-kissed honey color, but also we want to leave this as light as possible so i'm mixing in clear to basically dilute the formula so that it's like a more of a level 11 and that way it'll tone it to a level 10 and i'm not putting a level 10 on it that will tone it to a nine so we want to leave this as light as possible so the clear helps dilute it and keep it light and the 10 v is going to cancel out all of this yellow without overdoing it either you know and yeah so that's the color melt and the very front piece, I'm only, the very, very front here, like you can see where the face frame is, I'm putting the dark root color only like a half inch into her root. I don't want to drag this down at all on the very front because we like the face frame and that just gives it the most natural look when it's the dark color is a bit dragged down in the back. So towards the back behind this face frame, I'm dragging it down maybe two to three inches and it just gives like the most natural approach to any type of a balayage look. And yeah so I put a little foil on the very top just to avoid any like any color from getting on the blonde ends or anything on the other side when I like flip the piece over so you can see I'm just dragging down the back about two to three inches and then in the very front I'm only painting about a half inch up because we just like the face rain we don't want to get rid of too much of it you know and I only you know use one foil on the top we don't have to go crazy with the foil it's just to help prevent this from touching any of the light pieces on the other side and I'm just going to do the same exact thing on the entire head and I'm going to comb this root out a bit but you'll see it in a second.
then once I'm done applying the color melt, I go through with my wide tooth comb and I'm just by section by section combing this through just to like the middle. I don't want to comb this all the way down on the ends because I don't want to get this darker color on the very ends at all, but I'm just combing that line out a little bit. It really helps to give you even more of a seamless blend, even though we're color melting the two colors together. So the root color and the color that I apply on the ends, we're going to be kind of mixing the two together a little bit while I'm putting the ends on but this just really really helps ensure that there's not going to be any line of demarcation and it's going to be like super well blended So now I'm applying the formula onto the ends and you definitely want these two colors to mix like I said before. It's like you purposely want them to mix but basically what I do first is I just apply the lighter formula all over the ends where no, no color is on them right now because I definitely want to make sure that that's where the lighter color is going to be and I don't want to blend this root color too far down. And now I'm just going to apply the ends like this to the entire head. And I'm going to let this color melt sit in process for about 10 minutes, but I'm going to check it after five minutes because I don't want this to get too dark. So if you're doing this on your client, you definitely always want to check after five minutes if you think their hair is kind of porous. Like this client here was more of a corrective type of a color. So you never want this color to get too dark. So it's always good to check it, but I think I left mine on about for 10 minutes. And then I'm going to wash it, shampoo it really good and bring her back to my station to do the finishing. Okay, I gave my client a really good shampoo and condition, brought her back to my station, combed it out, and now I'm shaking it mostly dry with the dryer before I start styling it with a brush. And I really love to style it in the beginning with a brush in the very front because I wanna do like the big reveal right off the bat. I don't wanna wait for the whole style. So I usually like to, you know, just go right in and blow dry the bangs and the very top section so that we can really check out the color and make sure that we love it and make sure we don't need to adjust anything. But usually we don't ever have to adjust something it's just really nice to like know that we love it before we finish the rest of the styling so this just kind of breaks that ice and we just get to see it right away <laughs> and yeah my clients like that I showed them right away also because we're after all of this long process we want to see what it looks like right away you know and it's also nice to show them that you can that this looks good and it's really nice and seamless even if you are wearing this on straight hair like your balayage should look so good and seamless even if it's on straight and smooth hair so this is just kind of showing them even though I pretty much always do like a beach wave in my clients hair I like to just you know point out that it looks good and seamless with straight hair also so this is just that opportunity to show them that and it just makes the balayage look that much better and they you know just can know that they don't have to worry about that you know and now that it's all dry I'm just going in and taking big sections and doing like a soft beach wave because I definitely want to keep this style really nice and relaxed I'm basically just trying to add a little bit of shine by closing the cuticle of the hair and everything and also it makes for a nice picture I love beach waves
After I finish styling this, I'm gonna go through it and comb it out with my fingers with a nice serum. Okay, and this is the final result. We love how it came out. We absolutely love how it's like this nice honey golden color at the ends. And I'm so glad I was able to get this to lift all nice and even and to get it pretty light for her because her goal was to really go as light as possible. So I'm really glad that we were able to get her this light. And the color melt just makes everything look so nice and seamless. And we gave her a nice face frame in the front, taking away that like, like harsh chunk, giving her a nice blended face frame. I really love the soft dimension that's in her hair and it just makes it look so nice with the beach waves. It just brings out this dimension and it just looks so good on her. And don't forget, if you follow me on Instagram, it's just at Maxine Glynn. I'm going to post my written out formula for this color. It's already posted on my page, so go check it out. But I do that with pretty much all of my pictures. So definitely follow me on Instagram to see like written out formulas. But yeah, if you made it this far into the video, this is the end of it. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys learned so much. And I hope that you can share this video with people that you know it might help. And definitely subscribe to my channel to see see more videos in the future especially color videos I'm gonna be posting like as many color videos as I possibly can I have them all filmed already I just have to get around to editing them so you know stay tuned and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it and you want to see more also I really do love to see who makes it this far into the video so if you did watch to the end you're amazing and leave a little comment down below of a little painters emoji so that I know that you made it to the end <laughs> And don't forget to watch my other videos too. I do have a lot of videos based on balayage and highlights and double process and color fills and all types of color and more to come. So definitely, again, stay tuned. And also, you know, leave me any suggestions in the comments down below. I did have a couple of suggestions for haircutting videos. And yeah, so leave your comments and suggestions in the comments. I would love to see them. And yeah, so again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Oh, so give me, so give me your all I'll take it, I'll take it to Mars, oh I'll stick like glue inside your mind Just watch me break it